I'm going to go, I'm going to go right into it. All right. So we're, we're talking about drive 2011 directed by Nicholas winding Refn, based on a 2005 novel drive by James Salas. Not sure if you knew that Nicholas winding Refn, his credits before this one, the most relevant, I guess would be Valhalla rising and Bronson, which is a really solid, um, kind of unrecognized, underappreciated. I think film starring Tom Hardy, Drive stars Ryan Gosling, Carey Mulligan, followed up by Albert Brooks, Oscar Isaacs, Christina Hendricks, Ron Perlman, Brian Cranston. $15 million budget on this movie, which shocked me when I read that. $80 plus million dollar gross. So nice little profit there. Um, yeah, I'm going to go into it, man. This is your first time seeing it. What you think? Well, Carrie's last name is definitely appropriately named. She is a mulligan in this movie. Um, oh, man. I don't know why they picked her, you know, to be with S.A., you know, <laughs> Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear your uh, – let's get your <laughs> review first because it, it might, you know, save my review from it, which is not going to be as bad as you think. It's just going to be uh, what it is. Uh, you go. You tell me what you think. I want to hear your insights. I know it's it's your baby, somewhat. Uh, go for it. I, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's my baby. I I love the movie. You know what I like about it is obviously we we and we talk about this. You know, probably ad nauseum on other episodes, but with the constant shitting of superhero movies in the theaters now, which I'm not into, for the most part, this is a fucking superhero movie. It's a modern day real life superhero movie. And that's what I love about it. And I think uh, from what I read, Ryan Gosling had his pick of a few franchises like Marvel related, DC related, probably he passed on all of those. And he went with this because he, he believed in this story and he believed that this was sort of a superhero movie that he wanted to tell the story of. Um, and I, I really just, I, I think that is, so admirable for like an actor of his caliber to pass up on the money and go for something like this. Um, I just think it's really well done. It's really interesting. Uh, it keeps your attention the entire time from the first frame. It's action packed and tense. Yeah. I just love the unique nature of the entire story. I've never read the book, which I, I want to actually, I didn't know the film was based on a book until today when I did a little bit of research, but I'm interested to see what that's about. Yeah, I actually saw them in the rolling credits. It said based on a book from I was like, huh, interesting. Yeah. I'd be curious to see if it's actually like a graphic novel or a long form book or a short novel. And it'd be interesting to see what kind of mm -hmm. book would come out of this. Because the premise is pretty simple. Um, sure. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious how they can bring it out. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's one of those things I don't know. Like, I'd be curious to see what the original script was like. Because Ryan Gosling says very little in the film. And it's probably, what, an hour and a half to two hours long. He may have, what, four or five pages of dialogue total. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, to be able to pull that off, which I think he really did, is it, it takes a pretty special actor. And I also read that Hugh Jackman was originally attached to this. And for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And they went with Ryan Gosling. I don't know if he was a backup or, you know, they preferred him, whatever. But um, kind of interesting to think of what, what movie it would have been like or what the film would have been like if Hugh Jackman had been in it i think it would have been completely different yeah gossip is an exceptional actor it's why i was happy to watch this um and he yeah. does well in this it's not i don't think the film gives them the creative freedom to do what michael shannon did in take shelter mm -hmm. where i feel that was a tense movie and i was captivated from beginning to end and it had a payoff this one i was sort of captivated there was enough action there was definitely it was definitely tense you're right about that it was clearly an indie art film in and how it was shot. I'd love to watch a director's interviews because I, I have a feeling he's a certain kind of guy. This is just my read. Because some of the some of the sequences were overlong. They didn't need to be like that. Yeah, you'd probably argue differently. The long shots, you know, the the hallway tracking, the corners, the the pauses, and you almost feel uncomfortable with the pause and you're wondering what's going and then it comes next, right? Mm -hmm. But there's so much of it. I felt there's tense, like I said, which Take Shelter does, and it's a very slow movie. And I feel like <laughs> and this one I was kind of um I didn't get bored, but I was like, okay, I, I almost, again, I got close to fast forwarding it. Wow. Now, you could, you could say this is a product of the 80s, you know, and, I, and I'm definitely a candidate for that. But um, no, it was just, and I didn't. It was just close, right? An example would be Blade Runner. I got maybe close. This one I got where I was like, Matt wouldn't know if I fast forwarded just a little bit. <laughs> 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 10 seconds. <laughs> 
Um, right. Yeah. So, so in, in, that's my response to, to you there. But um, yeah. First of all, I'm, this is wasn't a bad movie. So I, I, I'm. This was not like a like Stillwater. You know, let's let's just forget about that forever um, <laughs> if we can. Um, no, it was it was it was good. We'll, we'll do the you know obviously rating at the end. There was a lot of interesting. One thing that you said about Hugh Jackman, which been interesting, is one thing I didn't buy. Um, and the superhero angle, by the way, is interesting. I didn't think of that. That's that is cool. You you can kind of see that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he's in the elevator with the one goon who's clearly two, three, four inches taller than him, probably twenty five pounds more muscle. Um, there's a few. I wish he were bigger. I wish Ryan Gosling was a little more jacked for to, to justify some of his badassery. Mm-hmm. Um, minor gripe. Yeah. Um, I get what they are doing with Carrie Mulligan and like, because here's how it would work in the perfect script. The perfect script. Oh, I didn't want Oscar Isaac to come back at all. Right. I, I, I'm done with him. He's a piece of shit. I want you, Ryan Gosling. And then the love triangle is shot. Right. Well, it still exists, but it's, it's pretty easy to deflate. They didn't choose to do that. They chose to show she still had lingering feelings for the father of her child. Um, they have that scene where they're reminiscing about how they met and it's uncomfortable for Ryan Gosling. And, and you almost wonder why he's there. Um, and I know, I think the director's doing that to show the reality of life, right? Like, it's not like the movies where everything just works perfectly. And ironically, I kind of wish it would have, cause I was just, I don't know. It, it, it does, it, it makes it harder for the payoff, right? Cause then I don't want to say, I use this word probably too much in our podcast, but it's kind of cuckoldry, but it is strange that your love interest is there. Then the husband's right there. And, and like, you're still sticking around and you, you basically put your life on the line for this girl, but she still kind of has feelings for someone. It's not like it's all for you. They don't indicate that Ryan Gosling is the winner of this game, right? It's probably like a, what, 70, 30, 60, 40? I don't know. It wasn't all to him, I don't think. What about you? I think that's part of the charm of it, personally. I think it's, I mean, essentially, they just have a crush on one another. They don't ever push any boundaries there, and I think that's kind of an interesting dynamic in, in like this sort of this sort of setting. And I also think it probably appeals widely for the sake that Ryan Gosling's in it for this uh, actress, Carrie Mulligan, and her character to be in the position she's in. I'm sure it plays into a lot of female fantasies, I would assume. Yeah, the kind of like better option, but you're married and he's there and, and it's, it's actually, you know. Yeah, so I mean, so maybe it's pandering to that audience, but I mean, that's essentially what what films are, right? I mean, they have to like reach out, pull people in and get people into it. And that's one way to get, I think, a straight female audience into it is had that lead female character be in the position that she's in. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, Again, I don't think, I think she did her job. Uh, I'm not going to give her like some rave reviews. And I get this where I'm also trying to be sensitive to the script. There wasn't a lot to give her, you know? The shows that hopefully my objectivity because I know Oscar Isaac is is a big. I'm sure the producers love him up in the, I don't know, corrupt Hollywood, you know, bureaucrats, whatever. He gets but a lot like of work, Oscar man. Isaac. Yeah, I like Oscar Isaac a lot. I, I do. He was unfortunately in Star Wars, guys. The second one that they came out with. I, I like him. I have. Um, I even like him in the Born, uh, uh, the one with um, Jeremy Renner. Oh, I didn't know he was in that. Okay. Born Legacy, yeah. Man, yeah, he's I, been I like a lot. Wow. I do. Okay. Um, anyway, so I mentioned him because actually his performance did kind of stand out to me. I, I liked Oscar Isaac. Then everyone else did really good. Brian Cranston, all the other sport crafts. I can't stand Ryan, Ron Perlman. Um, I really can't. I have a hard time watching him. Um, wish he wasn't there. Everyone else, though, did really well. Like, again, Brian Cranston had a small role, but he made it big. Yeah. Um, I liked him a lot. That's and nice uh, I like how he, he played it's really he, he plays the fuck up well again, like when he gets the money, the first thing he asks him is like, you know, how much money are we talking here? And he's like, just don't, you know. Yeah. He's like, just don't. But he can't help himself. That's he's he's a shyster. He's a a weasel. It's who he is and he plays it so well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's interesting to see Albert Brooks in a role like this. I mean, he doesn't do much. I'm I'm curious as to why he came out of like a semi retirement to to be in this movie and play the top bad guy yeah he was interesting too the the murder scene um i like that too. i do like the brutality yeah. i don't quite know why i guess i didn't, I didn't think they'd go there but yeah when like gossing takes the pole and shoves a gout down that guy's neck or whatever i'm like nice nice yeah man it's pretty unforgiving for what they give and if that fucking scene in that hotel man with the girl she's in the bathroom looking in the mirror like jesus yeah. oh my yeah. god it's they, they brutal 
brutal. Yeah. And in the elevator, like, and yes, I, I do agree. And this happens in so many movies. I, you know, actors usually are smaller, right? I mean, that's just the way it goes. And they're always kicking the shit out of these big monsters, like these huge men. It's just like, it's just, I don't know, man. <laughs> like the, the big guy never gets the win, it seems. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, that, that quick clip they showed, it was a millisecond of, you know, the foot smashing in the head, caving in the head of that guy in the elevator. That was, that was brutal, too, and just enough to make an impression. Yeah, and I, I got to admit, with the Christina Hendricks scene, um, I think we all agree we, we didn't really notice the head because I was watching her, her tits bounce. That's her biggest appeal, as we all know. That's that's why she's in movies. No oh. other reason. Oh man, you know she was cast perfectly in Mad Men. No, I she think. did. She she did good in this. She did. It was great. She 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 was the <laughs> she was the white trash girl that probably had big ticks in high school, by the way, and that got her in all kinds of trouble because she hung with the wrong crowd. You know, well cast. You know, and she was. I mean, she wouldn't want to hear this, but she's meaty enough. I'm not gonna say thick with a C. She's meaty enough. Word, you know, like again, the white trash girl that eats like McDonald's and Taco Bell and drugs, right? Like, mm. she wasn't like a supermodel. She was a. Uh, she has a meat. She could play that part. Girl. She. I, I don't think I ever told you. She and her husband. I guess ex husband now used to come into the bar that I bartended at in L. A. Quite a bit, and they were super nice. She was. She was so really milk sweet. Milk was on the menu. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, she just ordered white Russians. That's it. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh man so uh yeah i mean i uh, i i really like the movie i kind of was a little bummed out when you uh gave me gave me the pass and and suggested red eye because i wanted to rewatch this i probably haven't watched it in a few years but i think drive is solid and the director i haven't looked at anything he's done recently i know that the one he did only god forgives with ryan gosling afterwards was a pretty big bust and I watched that. Have you seen that movie? No. In some movie circles, I, I hear the contrary, and it was actually really good. You just all don't have taste. So I don't know if that's true or not. Okay. Interesting. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's different. That's for sure. Have you seen Bronson? No. I know that's Tom Hardy. I can see the, the front cover in my head. I haven't. Um, I don't know. There is something. I want to watch this director's interviews. I can probably do it afterwards because I got a little pretentious from this. That was <laughs> That's where I mentioned the scenes that were too long. I, I got a, a little pretentious, but. Yeah. Yeah. One thing, well, it's the top of mind because we should talk and we both talk about it. And everyone that watches this movie, I, I think, is going to agree almost unanimously. Yes, the soundtrack was exceptional. Yeah, yeah, so great. And I do remember uh, seeing an interview with Ryan Gosling around the time this came out, and uh, he and Nicholas Winding, uh, Winding Refn. I don't know how you pronounce his name. Sorry if I'm fucking it up. They met uh, about him potentially, you know, taking over and starring in the movie. And apparently they had a really awkward meeting. It wasn't going well. One of them was Wait, sick. Was uh, the director and Ryan Gosling. Oh, it yeah. was Ryan Gosling. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. they they met up. Uh, I think for like dinner before you know any anything was signed. And then they uh, went for a ride in the car. And Ryan Gosling was driving, and he put on some pop music. And apparently the director uh, Reffin, he just bursted out like crying. Because he was like, this is what the movie's about. It's about a guy driving around L.A. at night listening to pop music. And that's it. So, I don't know. Maybe that maybe that shed some light on what you just said. The theory about it being seeming a little pretentious. I mean, it's. I, I think he just had kind of a simple idea and just kind of fleshed it out a little bit. But it's entertaining, man. I mean, I really... I'm glad you could have those because that's what I was going to say. <laughs> like, <laughs> look, we all get tearful. There's there's, there's brilliance. There's the Pan's Labyrinth, 22 minutes standing ovation at Cannes or whatever. But there's... <laughs> well, I hate to go back to Stillwater. You read it got a five-minute standing ovation at Cannes. So uh, who's to say what, what that means to anything, right? Well, seats were electrified, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, they started doing that. That's smart. That's smart on their part. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. no, and it's funny, the real hero, um, which is used at the end when, you know, you think he's dead and he's not, which is a good shot because one thing we can talk about Blade Runner is I am annoyed that he gets hit in the stomach, stabbed, and then he dies like 35 minutes later. Like, you're going to tell me there's no time in there to, like, kill yourself or, you know, put yourself up. You're going to die on the stairs at the end of Blade Runner. Come on. Mm -hmm. Anyway, at least they didn't do that. There's this. Uh, the real hero soundtrack. I, I have captions on. Do you know what that song's about? No. It's the uh, actually for uh, Sully, Captain Sully, uh, landing in the Hudson. Really? She says 155 souls, a pilot in the cold. Yeah, 
I looked at the lyrics. That's what she's talking about. Wow. How about that? I think there's a double a double take. I think it, the first is a general here, and then the second chorus or I think the second line. I forget where some music comes up, and it talks about yeah, it's specifically that the Hudson River uh, landing. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's uh, that's really random. That another movie I haven't seen yet, but I'm sure that song's not in that movie. You know, the thing I was gonna ask you too, or I've heard that thought was good and well shot was um the hammer scene. I know, I know where you like that one. Well, yeah, I had about thwarted for the the tits, obviously. Um, no, uh, he when he puts the bullet to the guy's head and he's gonna use the hand, the firing pin, in the, or I guess the 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 primer at the back to to hit it with the hammer. That was interesting, although yeah. it would have blown up in his hand. But I like more so that you could tell they did a good job that the strippers stayed because they want to see this guy get jacked up because they hate him clearly. Yeah, um, yeah, that was a cool scene. They stayed calm. It wasn't like oh they're running out screaming like this typical bullshit that probably wouldn't happen, right? You're you're, you're observing a car wreck. You're going to sit there and watch. Well, and again, I think, and this is my take, is is the guy was a piece of shit, and for them they're like, yeah, f- yeah, this is revenge. He's always groping us or trying to fuck with us or you know whatever. Beat him up, cool. And they wanted to see it for like sure. Three run, like three girls run out, and then the rest just stay and watch. Okay, yeah, I, I had forgotten those specifics, but you're right. That was the character who was who was obviously the the scumbag who I guess owned or ran or managed whatever the the strip club. So yeah, who know who knows about their relationship uh, or his relationship with all the strippers? You can only assume, right? Yeah. So what do you think, sequel or no sequel? I want to know why they ended it that way. Really. What do you mean? With him waking up at the end? Spoiler alert, everyone. With him waking up at the end and driving off and leaving the money? Yeah, yeah. like the mobsters were going to come back and get the money eventually. I know that was implied, mm-hmm. right? So you leave the money because you don't want to get in that, that entanglement. But how would they find out about the girl? Like the, the girl was seemingly safe. I guess we're, I suppose, I guess we're supposed to believe she wasn't safe. And that's why he took off. Why do you think he took off at the end? Without the money or just what, what do you mean? I mean, it didn't, it didn't suggest that he just took off and disappeared. Right, it just ended when he's driving away from the the duffel bag of money. Well, the, the ending is the duffel bag of money. Uh, Carrie uh, Mulligan face walks up to his apartment, you know, knocks on it. He's not there, and then they show him driving away. I think the implication is she goes his way, his, he goes his way. Why? If, if it wasn't, then show him opening the door, show him walking down, you know, uh, wounded, and, and give her a hug or whatever. Why they end it that way? I, I didn't quite. I get why they could have. I'm curious what you think they did end it that way. I think maybe uh, from a character standpoint, he was leaving to take any danger that might be associated with him away from the kid and the girl. Yes. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I guess we're supposed to believe he'd always be driving, right? He'd, like like the guy says, he'd always be looking over his shoulder. I don't want to make it seem like an idiot. And I miss that. I just, I don't know. <laughs> you know, seemingly like, like what, what threat, right? Existential threat. Like the, 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 the actual real threat left would be the Eastern mob, which that's their money, which he left. Mm-hmm. and walked away from so i guess that would be it you know i don't know i, I would i would like the happy ending maybe i'm a a normie uh, yeah I, I like the more open-ended you know not not tying up the loose ends kind of thing that's that's what i prefer i think it just it it makes a movie more interesting but i guess that's just me yeah okay so yeah what do you uh what, what are you rating this one on a on a scale of one to ten what do you got seven two five that's pretty good, man. That's not bad for you. Okay. I'm going 7-9 on this one. Almost an 8. Which is a big okay. score. Yeah. Yeah, that is one of your better scores. Yeah. I think you're actually more brutal so far. We're more, I guess, uh, precise, whatever. Can't even find the word. Um, picky. With scores than I am, yeah. Well, I want, I want, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I want to get to that, you know, that perfect, that perfect film. And we've already done one. That's pretty close to it. Uh, who knows if that'll come out before or after this? But yeah, it's you got to set that bar pretty high. Yeah. Right. Well, you want to do with me? I can do it with you. Anything else? Drive, follow up, scenes, stuff. You know, nuances. No, I think just to, you know to touch again on Gosling's ability to play that kind of character and do it with such stillness and intensity. I just don't think there are many actors that can pull that off. I, th- I just think it's really impressive. Yeah, it definitely needed someone like him. And it was close to, it's not the same performance, I want to be clear, to Blade Runner 2049, which is fine. You know, a word kept popping in my head, and it's actually from Meet Joe Black, the first time I heard it, it's called diffident. And it's someone that is quiet, but it's usually an insecurity, so it doesn't quite fit, but mm-hmm. I'm trying to make forcefully fit him. I don't know why. I was like, man, he seems very diffident, but he's not insecure. He actually is assured of himself, you know, um, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, it's it's uh, it's the strong, silent type, right? Which we all kind of, I, I think, want to be at one point or another. You know, the guy who doesn't have to say something, he's okay with how he feels and 
pays attention to the world around him, but doesn't feel the need to always make noise about it or ever make noise about it. He just takes care of his shit, right? Yeah, I think we all kind of like fantasize. Could we be the guy that says very little and our prize is a uh, six out of ten with a kid, single mother, and a criminal baby's daddy that's going to show back up a week later? That's what I aspire to myself. Well, good, man. I'm glad that you're branching out. I mean, it's good to hear. Everyone needs love, right? That's true. (laughs) Um, And they got it.